Welcome to Business Tips with Michael Tobian. Today we're discussing three different sales approaches. I like to think of my sales efforts as being a combination of three different approaches. Soft sales, hard sales, and automated sales. Any selling that you do to your customers will likely include elements of all three of these approaches. So it's important to improve your skills in each one. Many businesses are deficient in one or more of these areas. So after this video, you may realize what areas you're missing out on with your sales efforts. Being a good salesperson is all about communicating effectively, and it's something that you should examine and work on as a business owner or freelancer. Warren Buffett was being interviewed by a young entrepreneur who asked him for one piece of advice for 21 to 22 year olds who just graduated. Buffett said this, invest in yourself. One easy way to become worth 50% more than you are now is at least to hone in your communication skills. If you can't communicate, it's like winking at a girl in the dark. Nothing happens. You have all the brain power in the world, but you've got nothing to be able to transmit it. He's right. Successful people are often the best communicators, or in other words, the best salespeople. So let's get into each of these sales approaches. Number one, soft sales. A soft sales approach is one that is low on pressure and high on trust in the relationship. Soft sales typically happen as a result of long-term relationships with somebody. As a business broker, I engage in soft sales all the time. I represent sellers as clients, and I have customers who are buyers who are looking at the inventory of businesses that I have to sell. I'm going to have a hard time encouraging somebody to buy a business with anything but a soft sales approach. Buying a business is a big decision and it isn't made lightly. Also, it takes time to investigate a business, go through the due diligence, and get through the whole process. I deal with many people that continually check back on new businesses that we have listed. They're looking for the perfect opportunity for them. So if they tell me that a business that they're looking at is not going to work for them, I'll try to resolve any concerns that they have, but I'm not gonna put a lot of effort into trying to talk them into it because I'm not really in the business of forcing somebody to get into an opportunity that they're not excited about or isn't the right fit for them. It has to be a good fit. I try to navigate doing a good job of communicating positive things about the business while respecting the buyer's time and needs. It's sort of a low pressure kind of sale. In my entertainment business, I also engage in soft sales. I work with event planners all over the world who hire us regularly to provide entertainment for corporate events and weddings. They know that if they ask me for options for a particular event, I'm not gonna kick and scream if their client decides it's not the right fit for their event. In these kind of sales, I often need to approach these relationships with caution. If I feel that the entertainment that I've suggested is the perfect fit for their event from my experience, then I'm, I may push a little bit and try to communicate what I'm trying to offer and that it will be a great fit for their event. But I don't want these regular clients feeling uncomfortable or like they're working with the stereotypical used car salesman. No offense to used car salesman. In this business, I use a combination of all the sales techniques that we're going to be talking about today. The most important element of mastering the soft sale is building a relationship of trust with your client and the best way to do that is really try to find a product for them that they will be happy with. Consistently suggesting and delivering exactly what is needed for them will build you a lifelong client. Sales approach number two, hard sales. So a hard sales approach is the opposite of everything we've just talked about. A hard sales approach expresses a sense of urgency. It's higher pressure than the soft sale. It's all about getting your client to make a decision now and convincing them that the product that you have is just what they need. Sometimes a hard sales approach has a negative connotation to it, and sometimes that's justified. We all have experienced salespeople that are disrespectful or dishonest or, or too pushy, 
But you don't have to have those qualities to master the skills of the hard sale. You can be genuinely concerned about the needs of your client while applying a little bit of pressure. Let me give you an example. With my entertainment business, I often have a client that has expressed an interest in a band or act that I have pitched for them. Sometimes they say something like, well, let me talk with my people this next week and I'll get back to you on what we're thinking. In these situations, I have every desire to respect my client's need to think about things. But sometimes we're dealing with a situation where their event is on a busy date or the act that they are considering is very popular. In these situations, I often make sure to express urgency. We work on a first come first serve basis. Our first client that gets us the contract and the deposit retainer that we require gets that date. By applying a little pressure, but still respecting my client's needs, I can let them realize that they don't always have all the time in the world to make their decision. Other examples where it's important to be good at the hard sales are when you're selling a product and there's a high chance that your customer is really not ever going to talk to you again unless they buy it right now. In these situations, it's usually appropriate to get them to make a decision. Vehicle salesmen, door-to-door -door sales, telemarketing, and many direct-to-consumer type sales businesses know exactly what I'm talking about. To be good at hard sales, it's important to have answers quickly, especially to common concerns. It's often helpful to have pre-written scripts made that assist you in your efforts to be efficient, since these situations uh, require that time and brevity be your ally. Number three, automated sales. The best kind of sales are when your promotional materials and product do all the selling for you. I call this automated sales, and I'm a big fan of it. With all my businesses, I have lots of promotional materials and videos and pictures and websites and social media and places that our customers can go to get all their questions answered. By the time our clients talk with somebody about a product that they may be interested in, I already want them to be as sold as possible. You can let your product do the selling for you, and not only will that make your job easier, but you'll be able to control the messaging and branding better. This is especially true if you have a sales team working for you. Everybody is using the same promotional materials. I put a lot of effort into this. The best part is, once you create those promotional materials, it doesn't take up any more of your time. It's there working for you. Another example of automated sales is processes that you can put in place for people to book or purchase your product or services without talking to any salesperson at all. This can be done through your website or on an app or through forms. This may not be the best fit for every kind of business, but the point is you should be looking at the most effective way to use automation and pre-produced sales materials as possible. So there you have it, three different kinds of sales that you will likely be involved in with your business. Get good at all three of these and you'll have a very strong and effective sales force working for you. Each industry is different, but in most cases, you will be using all three. Take some time to examine where your sales strategy is weak. You may have a really strong sales team, but weak promotional materials. I actually see this all the time. I sometimes see a very professional looking website and everything looks super legit and professional, but nobody will answer the phone at their business. Sometimes people don't express enough urgency. Examining where your business is in all of this is a valuable exercise in maximizing what you're able to do with your product. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe and follow for more advice and suggestions for growing your business.